Good morning, my name is Louis Felitti, and I am the administrator of Ave Maria Home down in Barclay, Tennessee. Um, I've been a uh, licensed nursing home administrator for the last 30 years, and I've worked in uh, several states throughout the country, uh, primarily in Texas, New Mexico, Oklahoma. Georgia, and Arkansas, and Tennessee. Um, as you well know, my pro I'm a graduate of Syracuse University with a master's in healthcare administration. And I, like I said, I've been in the uh, Mid-South area for over 30 years. My wife and I live in uh, Arlington, Tennessee. Uh, my uh, talk to today to you is going to be about nursing homes in Tennessee. But to talk about nursing homes in Tennessee, you can't separate it from COVID. So we're going to go speak. I'm going to speak to you about COVID, how, what it did to the industry in uh, Tennessee. You actually destroyed it because, as you well know, I mean, COVID really targeted the elderly people. If you were, let's say, 85 years and older and had several comorbidities, such as obesity, hypertension, heart, heart diabetes. Uh, you were prone. Your outcomes, if you did get COVID, uh, you had about a 99.99% .99%, you know, percentage of an outcome that was not going to be good. Coming down the scale, if you were like 20 years old and no comorbidities, you were going to do okay if you caught COVID. But as you all know, you all know your um, your your birthday, your anniversary's date, right? Spouse's birthdays. I have two other dates that I remember. They're right here with my anniversary, birthday, wife's birthday, March 9th, 2020. That's when we closed the facility. Just closed it. No visitors. No one could come in other than employees based on CDC guidelines. Spraying with Lysol every cart that came in the building. You know, visitors cannot visit their loved ones. Could bring food in. On and on and on. All right? PPE uh, shortage. I'll never forget. Uh, in March, I was driving around the whole uh, city of Memphis to get a box of 50 uh, face masks because no one had them. And I was on my last box, and you know, you only use them for like two or three days. And you know, I was using mine like for seven. So, but we didn't have any. So, uh, a friend of mine running another facility was nice enough to give me 50. And then finally, you know, a couple of days later, our shipment arrived. But that's how it was initially. Putting up plastic, you know, like, or I remember Christmas. Um, no visitors. We had like a parade. Brought the residents outside, you know, separated six feet, all that good stuff. And the families were around in a car. I mean, you know, because it all started, right? 14 days, we just need to bend the curve. And then we were at it since uh, the pandemic ended in, uh, you know, just this May, the, the Fed said it's over. But one, three hard years almost of it, and, and it's been hard. Subsequently, over a million healthcare workers decided to pack it in. They said, well, you know, not for me or whatever didn't want to take the vaccine didn't want to feel with full with it on that so here we are with many of the facilities and i don't to talk about um, west tennessee and that includes all the facilities in memphis and the surrounding area um they went all the facilities pre-covid averaged around 86, 87 percent occupancy. Pretty good, you know. Um, after COVID, 76 percent 
And currently, right now, with the occupant survey that the state has just recently conducted, at 71 percent. Uh, turnover rates for our CNAs, nurses, and uh, LPNs and RNs, Memphis area is like running 81 percent. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's pretty high. But the other parts of the uh, state are right there with Memphis, 76 percent. I think Nashville area uh, in there, but. You know, there's no staff. And what has happened, many of uh, people who used to work in long-term care are going to work for an agency. They're saying temporary staffing. So who's ever in temporary staffing got a great thing, you know? But the rates, it can, they're not sustainable. I mean, you know, they will charge, let's say for us, an uh, agency may charge or pay the employee $19 an hour. They're charging us $31 an hour. Mm -hmm. Weekends, probably $40 an hour. And you cannot run a business like that. Uh, so you add with the low occupancy rates, labor costs shooting through the roof, it doesn't bode well for many facilities. And out of the 314 Tennessee facilities, <coughs> Uh, based on 2022 uh, cost reports, 50% of the facilities are uh, are operating at a negative. And as you all know, we're all business people. I mean, you could only do that for so for so long before you got to think of something else, different business model, or <laughs> saying here <laughs> we can't do this anymore. So, but that's where we are faced. It's uh, it's been tough on many people now because of that. When you have all that together, uh, everyone who's working there now is just at what's in. I mean, you know, people work hard out long hours uh, because you don't have anyone. It's not just us. Even the hospitals are are really staff challenged, but. Since I'm talking about long-term care, um, that's where we are. Uh, it all started, you know, three years ago, and then when the vaccine came out, here's another date I remember. That's right up there with my birthday, 12, 21, 20. That's when I received the first vaccine. You know, and we were first, the long-term care industry. All right, and uh, the only two people who took the vaccine that they lined up for it was my uh, my director and myself. And I asked my staff, aren't you going to take the vaccine? You know, they didn't say anything. So three three weeks later in January 20th, I believe, I got the sec we got the second dose. And all my staff was lined up, the whole staff. And I said, well, what happened? They said, well... We wanted to see if you were going to die. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. All right. <laughs> uh, but the vaccine, it did help the elderly. I mean, protected somewhat. But, you know, if they did get COVID and they were vaccinated, they weren't going to, you know, have really bad negative outcome, which I say real negative on that. And then, you know, we started opening the facility. So come December 2021, was it 21? Yeah, the end of the year. Everyone, you know, employees went to Christmas parties and, you know, families, visitors came in and out. And I think December 27th, we had all this outbreak of COVID. You know, no people in, no staff in the kitchen because they all had COVID and they had to be at that time out at least seven days. You know, so guess who's in the kitchen? Not as a cook, but right in this room. Yeah, and that's even that's rough. For twelve hours running in the dish room. Uh, but you know, we did the protocol and you know isolating and so forth. But no passed on from COVID. They're mild, their symptoms were very mild, 
And, and that's because the vaccine did work for that group. It protected them somewhat. And not saying they got COVID. Many of them were vaccinated and they get COVID. But they did not have the negative outcome of going to the hospital or, or passing on. So that was a good thing. So here we are, the end of the, uh, what can I say, the end of the uh, uh, pandemic, allegedly. And, uh, and you can't fight, uh, you know, a virus with a vaccine. But that's, for some reason, people, you know, smarter than us, allegedly, said we could. But uh, it destroyed the long-term care industry. You know, and out of 314 homes, you're probably going to see uh, maybe about 20% closed within the next year or so. We at Alba Marie are a little different because we have a different model. We have like, it's called the greenhouse model, where we have nine different cottages and in the CNA is basically cook and do laundry and like cleaning. And it's like a home, even though we still got to meet the same requirements. Uh, but it's a different concept. So we run much sharper, our occupancy is very good compared to other places. Because uh, many people, you know, like that type of concept. And we're the only one in West Tennessee that has that model to date. Uh, I'll be delighted to take any questions you may have. Any questions for me? Yes, sir. Um, just a couple couple questions. Uh, one, um, any tax credits coming from um, local or state government that can help you get these people back to work? Uh, we are waiting to be reimbursed on labor costs from IRS, but they are... Uh, you know, not looking at it until they said 2024. That's going to help us, right? I mean, uh, we did get some grant money. There's some facility uh, agencies that did help a little. But like I said, I mean, when you're paying over $31 an hour for a, a CNA, that, that, that's hard. Even though we bumped our wages like everyone else, and everyone's paying over $20 an hour, $22 an hour. Uh, you still can't get them, you know, find your staff. And that just goes for nurses, too, and RNs, LPNs, and those are the three main categories. Uh, everyone in this whole state is struggling. Uh, no one has a full complement of staff today. Yes, sir. And then the, the other follow-up question is, I know that you, you say 20% of these uh, folks are going to be called, or these uh, housing facilities are going to be closed. In the future, where do you see the direction that could save this industry? Uh, is there any hope what you see with some changes that are going to be made to, to entice some of these people besides increasing I think uh, what entice many buildings in Tennessee are old because we have a certificate of need and it restricts nursing home beds. So many facilities have not been constructed, new construction, and probably like around here, I'm thinking of like maybe two in the last 15 years, and I'd say going on 15 years is there. But if you eliminate the uh, certificate of need and and people apply, or I should just say developers come in and they build brand new homes, you know, it might save some of the homes if they're smart to go that route and move their beds or their CON and, and build new homes, but that takes capital, you know, 20, 22 million. Nothing to sneeze at now. So we're heading into uh, inflation, uh, not inflation, or uh, whatever they call it now. You no, know, depression, I don't know. What, what Recession. Recession. <laughs> Recession, there you go, sorry. Yeah. sorry. What kind of models uh, are you guys exploring new uh, There's a lot of funding coming from Medicare and sometimes dual eligible patients. Uh, are you guys exploring uh, 
tapping into that money. We're all working always to, we're all always looking to expand and try new things. We have a pretty, a very good uh, CEO who's on top of things like that and trying to move it. The reason why I say that, you know, I work with a lot of uh, uh, independent pharmacies. Mm -hmm. That's a, the same challenges that you are having yeah. with the long term is happening with the independent pharmacies. They're disappearing. But one of the things that we're doing to help them is creating new uh, diversified revenue models. So, for instance, some pharmacies are implementing insurance agencies to sell Medicare plans for patients. Because you know they were noticing that the patients were being stolen by other people, and then driven away to you know uh, mail order mail and order. stuff. And then, you know, and then they, it stuff. was killing the independent guys. You know, yeah. most people didn't know that, but that kills your independent pharmacies. Yeah. You know, somebody tell you uh, change it to mail order, and you're going to the independent uh, that you are being part of running those people out of business. Anyway, I just you know, yeah, we're, we're always look at we're always things. looking to diversify. Absolutely. All right. Any other questions someone may have for me? Oh, yeah. Yes, so uh, being a little bit more optimistic, I know things are really hard right now in your industry. Do you see where it's going to pick back up? Oh. Uh, I think it's coming. Everyone has to do different things. For one, you know, you have to make sure you have a better work environment than for an agency. So staff would not want to go work for an agency. You got to look at the wages, which is the big component, because it's not benefits. They don't want benefits. They want dollars. You know, I mean, that dollar or two dollars an hour bump. To them is very critical. I'm worried about health insurance. They could get it on the exchange and anywhere else and pay about the same amount of money because you know health insurance, as you well know, is very expensive. On that, I mean, so that's the type of thing is you got to look at your whole wage structure and see and in the job and see what would entice someone to come over. Uh, people like working for our model because it's not like the traditional nursing home or healthcare agency. You may have one corridor and you got four, you know, four, four aides and a nurse and, you know, you're looking for a lift and you can't find it and, you know, half your people aren't, they're on break and you don't even know they're on break. <laughs> and, you know, and, and all that. But so, in our model, there's normally 10 to 12, we call them elders, in a house. And, and we always staff with two uh, aides, so that's like a, a ratio of one per five. And that is like the highest in the state, in the state of Tennessee. I know that. It is very hot. And we have every and a lift in every room, so like I said, they don't have to worry about, well, we didn't charge the batteries for the, you know, lifts, take your lifts, lifts go all the way, all the way into the private shower, and that's a real plus on that. So the model that we use is, is very successful on that. Yes, ma'am. I would submit because of my affiliation that instead of fighting the wage problem, which everybody in the room has, yeah. uh, I would submit that you might want to bump up your benefit package. And it is dollars, as you know, because yeah, if dollars. you have to go somewhere to pay for services, you need the cash to pay with. And to differentiate yourself as an employer, right. you might consider offering things that people cannot buy on the open market. That's a good point. And we Such have as, our, uh, our, our, our CFOs always that looking that at that. that. Yes. Now, as, as we speak, the whole, our, C, our CFO is looking at that right now. Excellent. Excellent. That's part of to see where we need yes. to go. Yes. yes, sir. Do you do business with uh, Medicaid, Tenshare, and uh, is this, I know Tennessee has not been expanded because of... Yeah, yeah. we do business with Tenshare. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys support or are you trying to get Medicaid expanded here in Tennessee? Uh, <laughs> in the state? Uh, 
I, I don't know what to think it is on that. I, I don't think they are. I don't, I don't see Tennessee expanding their Medicaid program. They had the opportunity a couple of years ago to put in, right, to expand Medicaid and it did pass. So 